Hi, I'm Christina Blanchard Horan with Global Health Liaisons. We are featuring this series on HIV and COVID. It is in dedication to Dr. James Ita Hakim, who passed away due to COVID complications. January, friend and colleague. We'll begin this series with Dr. Peter Magini, who has been a phenomenal researcher in the field of HIV AIDS. And he will talk with us about what it was like in the beginning of the HIV epidemic and how we can compare that with the current situation with COVID. We appreciate your attention. We hope that you'll send questions in the follow option. You can leave comments and add your questions. We'll be discussing those at the session on the 15th of September when we will feature a live event with all of our panelists to answer questions posted. Please join us so that you can speak with the presenters, provide your questions and get answers. Without further ado, now let me introduce Dr. Peter Magini. I did want to speak a little bit about some of the things that you um, that you talk about in your books. A, a Cure Too Far. The book that I wrote was uh, genocide by denial. Uh, that's the most. That's right. This book came out in 2008. 2008. Maybe you can see it now. Oh, I see it now. Mm -hmm. And then the second book that you referred to is called A Cure Too Far. A Cure this Too Far. This one came out in 2012. I don't know, 15 years or so. Yeah. We've known each other. And um, and this we d decided to, to do this uh, in honor of uh, Dr. James Gita Hakim, who is um, who passed away in January uh, due to COVID. So maybe you can speak for a second about how you knew James and just talk well, about him. The loss of James was very devastating to us. This is someone I have no, I had known since the early beginning of the HIV epidemic. The epidemic that in late 1980s and 1990s was devastating Africa. He stood shoulder to shoulder with me and my colleagues as we tried to do something about this epidemic to alleviate the suffering of our people. James Hakim worked with us on pioneer research projects. And one of the pioneer research projects he worked with us on was called DART, Development of Antiretroviral Therapy in Africa. We had to undertake this research because so many people in Africa were dying by millions. We estimate for example, that a million died in Uganda and then across Africa and the world indeed, uh, 37 million people died, but the vast majority of these people were in Africa. At the peak, 3 million people were dying every day. James was always with us to carry out research, to see whether we could find effective treatment that could alleviate the suffering, that could put a stop to the carnage of HIV AIDS in Africa. This is James Hakim, whom we miss so much. And uh, by the time uh, James passed away, in yet another epidemic, pandemic now, that has got great similarity to HIV, James had the satisfaction of seeing that AIDS was no longer killing as many people as it used to be, as it used to do in early 19, in the late 1980s and through 1990s and throughout the 2000s. And he made great contribution in making that one happen. So we will miss him but his contribution to Africa and the world will last forever. As I speak to you, uh, Christina, there are millions of people in Africa 
who would now not be alive, but for the efforts of James Hakim and others who fought the good fight against this epidemic, they are now alive. Some of them are parents and some of them are grandparents and we have grandchildren. James has grandchildren who are now alive thanks to his contribution. That's what I could say about uh, my colleague and a friend, James Jita Hakim. He'll be great. You said to me the other day, is history repeating itself? Do you want to speak a little bit to that? Yes, Christina, I would like to speak about... Uh, in Africa, uh, we have no vaccines. And we are practicing uh, the three main preventive uh, measures. The first one is to use masks. The second one is to constantly wash hands. And the third one is social distances. This is similar to what we uh, practiced in trying to control HIV when we have no treatment. Mm -hmm. We had what was then called ABC, the three major preventive measures. The first measure was sexual abstinence, which we called A, abstinence. B, be faithful. And C, condoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We used those two preventive measures. They helped reduce the impact of the epidemic, but people continued to die massively because we had no treatment. Right. Now, but as eventually when treatment became accessible, more accessible, the dying decreased dramatically in in Africa. Likewise, in the United States, for example, right. we had a peak, a devastating peak, where even the president himself got in. With the introduction of widespread use of uh, uh, vaccines, we are seeing a drop, in, not only in the United States, but in all rich countries. Mm -hmm. This is where the two uh, epidemics, HIV and COVID, resemble each other. The rich have got a solution. The poor know a solution exists in the world, but is not accessible to them. So right. this is the unfortunate situation. Solution is treatment everywhere, without which there is no solution. It is it's just an illusion of a solution unless the entire world gets access to COVID-19 vaccine. This is why this seminar is very important. It's actually quite crucial. We learn lessons from the AIDS epidemic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and these lessons, we can apply them to the COVID pandemic. And this means we have to fight together as a world to fight epidemics that affect humanity. In mm -hmm. 1996, mm -hmm. highly effective drugs that could right. put a stop to the carnage of AIDS were discovered. Then they were called HART, highly active antiretroviral therapy. These drugs were accessible only to rich countries. For over a decade, after effective treatment had been discovered, people yeah. continued to die at a rate of three million per day. How do we solve that problem? We need to get them as partners in the fight against COVID-19. Partners so, with us, and we need to have discussions with them together with other uh, uh, stakeholders. Those are nations, various nations. We have a medical profession. We have activists. We have governments. I've heard President Biden say that uh, US has some excess vaccines which it will donate to 
uh, the rest of the world who cannot currently afford them or don't have access to them. And we need to build a partnership. And the partnership, uh, like what was built to make HIV drugs accessible. We don't want, surely, to keep uh, starting from scratch whenever we get a new epidemic. We need right. to make this a good practice, a good practice for the world, that mm -hmm. pandemics, epidemics, which affect the entire world, we are going to have a partnership. This partnership will include pharmaceutical companies, working with doctors, with the social workers, in, with governments to address yeah. them as a world, as a compassionate world. Otherwise, uh, we'll keep reinventing the wheel every time a new epidemic comes.